Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and in this flight, our A flight of the series, I'm going to fly an Avril Vulcan from Keflavik in Iceland to Glasgow in Scotland. And in the previous video I said that I'd be going to Edinburgh but it, I recall from a previous flight that Edinburgh's airport currently has trees in the middle of the runway and uh, while well, I want to avoid that, maybe Glasgow has the same problem. Of course I mean in the game, I do not mean in real life. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I wanted to avoid that problem and maybe Glasgow is a better idea. Uh, so hopefully that will work out. But this is the Avril Vulcan. This is a freeware plane and obviously a very unique one at that. And uh, well, we'll see how it goes. It's got pretty bad fuel efficiency at low levels, so we have to fly high. It's going to be mostly over water. And so we will have the Apollo 12 audio with uh, Al Bean, Pete Conrad and Dick Gordon and the PAOs and uh, Capcoms, uh, so we will have that as entertainment, but otherwise hopefully we'll just have really spectacular views of this very, very interesting plane with its ginormous wing. <laughs> uh, so anyway, the cockpit looks great actually, I mean for a freeware plane, uh, it, it's very heavily detailed, well, I mean there's, there are some elements missing, I think there probably should be an upper panel, I'm not 100% sure about that. But they got the nice map knock gauge there. Everything seems to be in good order. And uh, yeah, so let's begin. I'll take it from the external view. Um, I'm just uh, interested in the configuration of the flaps right now. I mean, it doesn't really have flaps, they're more like elevons. But okay, well, it's just probably because it's got brakes on. So, let's start with the audio. When we last left the Apollo 12 crew, they were uh, just beginning day three. So that's where we're picking it up. Okay, let's hope this is not too loud as far as the engines are concerned. Yeah, that might be a little bit loud. Hold on. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 61 hours uh, 48 minutes uh, now to the flight of Apollo we'll 12. That. Our displays uh, presently show Apollo 12 at an altitude of 174,824 nautical miles. Its uh, velocity now reads uh, 2,465 feet per second. Since our last announcement, uh, we've had hey. only You're up. one brief contact uh, with the Apollo 12 and we'll play that for you now. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, we see uh, zero on your wastewater. Thanks very much. Okay. I don't know where the regular speed gauge is on here. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Uh, meanwhile, in uh, Got the mock Control gauge Center, there. Houston, uh, discussions have been taking place. Uh, regarding the possibility of moving the uh, television time uh, forward uh, or in advance of that shown in the flight plan. Uh, these times have not yet been definitized. As uh, soon as they become known to us, uh, we will pass them along immediately. We're now at uh, 61 hours, uh, 49 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Okay, we're going too fast as it is. But um, we are turning around completely, so there's this peninsula with Keflavik on it. Oh, uh, we've got clouds. It's such a remarkable landscape, Iceland. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 62 hours, uh, one minute, now into the flight of Apollo 12. Apollo 12, uh, presently uh, 175,119 nautical miles away from Earth. Its uh, velocity now reading uh, 2,457 feet per second. A uh, change of shift is presently taking place in the Mission Control Center uh, with uh, Cliff Charlesworth's green team of flight controllers uh, relieving uh, Pete Frank's uh, team of orange controllers. Meanwhile, we've uh, had uh, a little over a minutes worth of conversation with Apollo 12 and we'll play that for you now. We'll go along the Hello, south coast of Iceland first. Hello, Houston 12. Go ahead, 12. 
Apollo 12, Houston, go ahead. Darn clouds. Hello, Houston, Apollo 12. Apollo 12, go. Roger, Houston, looks like that uh, water dump is uh, kind of ruined our PTC here. Uh, I'm just wondering if you want us to do anything with it or uh, just stand by and wait till the, uh, the fixed attitude is 63 hours. Uh, Roger, we, uh, we followed your uh, water dump maneuver. Again, they've got the passive thermal control roll, the barbecue roll going, and so when they dumped water, it accidentally gave them a little bit of thrust in one direction. Uh, we'll uh, just continue to watch your attitude changes for a while, and uh, uh, if anything, uh, if you're jostling just too far, we can uh, come out of it, but uh, let's uh, stay in the attitude uh, you're in now for a while. Okay. They're afraid of... They're afraid of the PTC going wobbly. Apollo Control Houston, uh, we uh, still have no firm time yet uh, for our next scheduled television transmission. However, there is a, a very definite possibility that this time will be moved forward uh, from the 63 hours uh, 30 minutes uh, ground elapsed time as reflected in the flight plan. Uh, we will pass along an update time as soon as it becomes available. And at uh, 62 hours, uh, four minutes into the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. Okay, well, again, the clouds are sort of getting in the way of the scenery. Reykjavik would be off to our left somewhere. wonder if there's... It looks uniquely magnificent, of course. But there are views, and then there are views of the Vulcan. This is Apollo okay, Control, we should probably level off here. We're at 41,000 feet. Apollo 12 uh, presently is coming out of the passive thermal control mode, barbecue mode, going to the attitude hold mode because of disturbance set up by a wastewater dump. Also because of the uh, limb checkout, which is scheduled uh, normally starting at about 64 hours. However, uh, there's some discussion going on here in the control center of moving that up. Also the uh, accompanying television transmission from the spacecraft. We're standing by uh, for a resumption of conversation. Is it saying that I'm past Mach 1? That's not possible, is it? After that's played back, we'll leave the line open so that uh, any further discussions of... Uh, uh, I have some suspicions about the aerodynamics of this plane right now. Picked up. Let's uh, play back these tapes at this time. Uh, I wish I had a regular speed gauge here somewhere. Where is the indicated airspeed? Uh, is that it? That's not. Uh, approaching 300. That's pretty fast at this altitude. Oh. Let's cut it. We're really too fast. Well, um, well, this... This Avro Vulcan can pass Mach 1. I'm pretty sure they weren't supposed to be able to, but... You know, that Houston, uh, indicated 12. airspeed indicator is going all over the place. Go ahead, okay. And it's not agreeing with my external view. Uh-oh. Uh, this is not right. Uh, Apollo 12, Apollo 12, Houston, how do you read? We're going to end up stalling at this rate. Um, yeah, my external view has a totally different speed on it. <laughs> That's why I got caught out by that Mach 1. I and my external view was like 30, 30 knots lower. Uh, Apollo 12, Apollo 12, this is Houston, over. Houston, Apollo 12. 12, Houston, go. Uh, what's going to be the roll angle? It does have a CG thing here, though. Nose heavy, tail heavy. Uh, for this, uh, TV. Roger, 
Roger, your roll angle is 285 degrees. Pitch, 9-0, and yaw is 0. Apollo 12, Houston. Oh, that was interesting. Go. Roger, we've got a checklist change for you for coming out of TTC. Uh, would you open your checklist to page F97? Over. Roger, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, on step uh, number one to exit GNN PTC, uh, because you're so far out of the dead band, uh, you ought to put your man at three to excel command before you uh, put your auto RCS selects to main A and B. And we suggest we put that at this end of the Roger. checklist change for good. So that's a bit complicated. Yeah, that's probably Roger. good. Okay. Okay, and we think you probably ought to come on out of PTC now. That's one of the reasons why we're having a little trouble with calm. Okay, and uh, what we'll do is we'll, we'll slide on over to... Uh, I've got throttles way down right now. Oh, and I'm diving here, but we're pretty high. Apollo 12, Houston. Haven't been able to stabilize this at cruise yet, obviously. So yeah, uh, they have a dead band, which is the area in which the computer is not going to fire the thrusters if it wobbles within that area around the PTC, but it'll only fire the thrusters when it's outside of like that cone, that acceptable region. This is Apollo Control, some numbers while we're waiting for a resumption of conversation. But I can't explain all the stuff that they're and talking about. The uh, altitude above the Earth. Here we go. Houston with a flight plan update. Okay, Houston, uh, ready to copy. Roger, uh, your TV pass at 63 plus zero, zero. Uh, number one, stop your PTC roll at 285, and this is uh, what you need to put the sun uh, through the hatch window. Uh, step number two is your high gain antenna angles are pitch one niner, yaw 268. Step number three. Uh, put the you can see where my throttles ALC are right now. It's a little bit weird. I think it's overpowered. Position. The model, I mean. And open the camera aperture to full open for your tunnel pictures. And that's probably why previously I had fuel consumption issues. I think it has more thrust than it ought to. And that's been the problem. I'll have to check the aircraft file. I haven't fiddled around with the aircraft files before. I, I know about the aircraft maker, okay. of course, and I want to use it, uh, but... Haven't filled around with them yet, but this might require it. Seems to need a fix. And it certainly deserves it. I don't want a non functional Avril Vulcan or inaccurate Avril Vulcan. We're going pretty slow right now. It's a long trip, it's 750 nautical miles, so I was hoping to go a little bit faster than this. Back to distance and velocity, 175,763 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity now 2,439 feet per second. Continuing to monitor air ground. As a crew of Apollo 12, Prepare to man intrepid for uh, housekeeping chores and fairly extensive checkout of the lunar module. I need to get the Apollo 12 timeline up to see how far away they are from the moon. Uh, not from lunar SOI, I mean from actually making orbits. Hmm. Should be like early the next day. They'll, en Apollo 12. They'll enter the SOI on day three. Uh, when do you want us to start this uh, show now? Uh, Pete, we're ready whenever you are. Your option. Okay, that's what I figured. So uh, we're starting to pressurize the uh, 
command module now and uh, we'll uh, start here directly. I suppose okay. I could check the numbers. Let me see, Avril Vulcan. And we can get the in-game numbers maybe. Sorry, interrupting. Um, because in this game we have all this information. Engine power, maybe that's what I want. Horsepower, really? Uh, could I have thrust or something? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, engine thrust, yeah. Pounds, alright, that'll do. Okay, so, it's reading, um... This is Apollo Control. Spacecraft apparently now in attitude hold. We've had solid lock-on with the high-gain antenna through the Goldstone 210-foot dish. We're standing by now for the uh, television transmission and the subsequent manning of the lunar module Intrepid. Standing by live on the air ground circuit. I mean, I it's unlikely that they got it wrong. It says, uh... Well, I mean, it's tough to say, because we're at altitude, and it's, it's reading a thrust, well, I've, I'm only at 25% thrust, and it's got 2,000 pounds thrust right now, and then there's four more, I don't know what those are, but they're negligible in thrust, um, but four engines of about 2,000 apiece. If I went to full throttle, I would suppose they're about 10,000, and uh, Wiki says that... The maximum thrust on this kind of Olympus engine, uh, 101, is 11,000, so that tracks. Seems to be right. Okay, uh, we're coming up Fox at this time, and we're getting ready to uh, give you the TV. Al, I'll uh, get it going in just a second. Roger, standing by. Maybe it's just because we're not carrying a very heavy load. We're not carrying nuclear weapons or anything, so maybe that's why. It was overperforming, and apparently they didn't um, set the maximum structural speed quite right. We're safe now. Jerry, we've got a drift now yet. We have to put on his hat. Hey, Roger. Lights, camera, action. Let's see. Where's fuel consumption? Well, we have the fuel gauges, that's important. That'll be sufficient, I think. We're still at 42,000 feet, so I'm descending a little bit. And then let me get over here where the sun comes in. There you go. Still, my oh, external me. tracker says uh, 245 knots indicated. And here it's about 20 knots higher. So I better be careful about that. Okay, you're putting it out. Wait a minute. You got it on the ground yet, uh, Houston? Not yet, Pete. Okay, we'll hold to get the picture. Okay, we're not copying any FM downlink as yet. Houston, we have you in blushing black and white. And How does black and white blush? I don't know. 12 Houston, we have you in blushing black and white. Okay, they're playing the TV recording. And the color's coming Roger. in now. What happened to the color? Take there a little time go. for processing. Okay, uh... Okay, as you can see, uh... Dick's up there in the tunnel, and he's opening the vent valve now, and he's uh, starting to pressurize the limb. And we have a delta P of uh, about 2.3 at the moment. Okay, it's going down about 2.2. Well, 
Well, no, the uh, Delta is coming up when we pump up the cabin. Delta B is 1-8. What's the cabin? Well, we're about to be off the coast of Iceland now. You can't really see it, but there was land down there for a ways. Okay, one PSI, LP. Still going with real world no, weather. So. The cabin, uh, Houston, the attitude that you have us in, out our number one window, we have the earth, and out the number three window, we have the sun shining in, and out the number five window, we have the moon. And, uh, of course, we're too far from either the Earth or the Moon to see any motion, so it just seems to us that we're in suspended animation out here. Roger. Let's have some pressure out. Yeah, it is, and, uh, you just run the cabin rig on, and that ought to be okay, so. Okay, we're just... Uh, we're reading, uh, 4-7 on your cabin right pressure now, now, and, Al, we're not reading you at all. Box here. Yeah. I do now. Okay now, Al. Okay, and the hatch is open. What the heck is this thing doing up here? Here we go. There's, a, there's another one right there. You may not want to move it. There you go. All right. Okay. How's the lighting down there? Houston looks pretty good on the monitor. It's very good. We have a good picture of the hatch. At your uh, feet in front of the window there, feet. Sorry. Everything beats 1G to all heck. Sure does, sure. Right, 1G is a pain. A lot of aches and pains are basically due to 1G. We're still good on the Mach number. Stay firm. Uh, really li okay, lighted things up. We'll get up here again it's and, wobbling uh, a little bit, but up. otherwise okay. As you recall, we've had it in and out of there several times already. And the procedures are fairly simple. Now that we've done it, we've already bled the nitrogen out, but I'll just hit that button anyway, just for procedural purposes. What kind of wind do we have? Not a helpful one. No, it's a headwind. Not a direct headwind, but still. So this will take a bit longer.
Okay, uh, turn the capture lights release 180 degrees. And all I have to do is pull the probe out of there. Okay, when she comes. Okay, looks like we're like good and level at no. about 40,000 feet. Well, okay, it says it's going down now. Ah, it's about right. Okay. Could stand to go a little bit faster. See how far I can push it without hey, Pete, overdoing it. Coming down. Okay, we're right on it now. What was that? Down in the lamp here. 
goes. I'm just marveling at the wing of this still. <laughs> just continuing to marvel. It says something on the nose. Spirit of Great Britain. Oh, okay. I think this is the actually uh, the last uh, last flight worthy one then. Let me double check. Yeah, this one uh, was restored for use in flight displays and air shows, and uh, so it and it flew for the last time on October two thousand fifteen. CDR's commander. Yeah, that's right. Here's the box of Queen XP. Coming in. Right by you. Next one's two towels. I'll go get them. We just uh, had a good okay. view of the Pliss fastened uh, down there on the floor between your legs. Pliss is the portable life support system that they'll use for the lunar EVA. Yeah, I can't get down any further. My comp line won't allow me to go any further than I am right now, so I got myself Velcro to the top of Al Pliss. Okay, that's a good view of it right there. You're just gonna have to imagine everything. <laughs> it's like radio. Good old time radio. As many people would experience it.
But the new rig, come on, don't leave me hanging. Oh. Happened. Oh, I think they had communication drop out. Yeah, here comes a couple of towels. Dispose of that and clean next door in the left hand side storage compartment. Let me get the 16 millimeter magazines and the 70 millimeter magazines. Hey, Al, why don't you come up here and let me get those for you. Okay, sure that's works. a good idea, and then maybe I can say a few words about this. Here, well, as a matter of fact, you're going to have to do that, Al, because I can't get any lower on this comp cable. You know I want to get down there. All right. I'll, uh, I'll hold the camera, Dick. I have a three-way switch here in the tunnel. Okay, I'll just come up past. Okay. Oh, there seems to be on the forums an update for a freeware plane that I was planning to fly later on, but it's from somebody else, not the original producer of the plane, so I don't know. Uh, we just had a good view of your uh, helmet storage bag down there a couple seconds ago. Yeah, Al, here's the Kleenex and the towels. Looks like you're trying to pack a telephone booth. Oh, went a little bit too far to the left here. You might have caught it right there, but they're doing two EVAs rather than one for Apollo 11. Here's 
three more. And these three will be used the second EVA, and so we'll stick them over here in the right-hand side storage compartment. The right-hand side uh, doesn't, isn't removable at all, as uh, you probably know. We go ahead and we're, the, the cameras and uh, film that we bring back from the lunar surface, we'll put uh, all of that materials over here on the right-hand side. definitely went too far anyway, left there. Because the left-hand side won't be there. I was just uh, looking yeah, for now, who made this. That, uh, cloth bag in, uh, his place on the right side. Roger. Okay, here's the 16 millimeter film. Okay. Same thing with the 16 millimeter film you'll be seeing in a moment. So this Avril Vulcan was made by Dom Henry, D-O-M Henry, and. Uh, he also made quite a lot of other good planes like the P-38, Spitfire, um, and Hawker Hurricane, all freeware, and of decent quality, uh, actually very good quality, could be payware quality. Avoid cloud right, flickeries the here. Later, the handle and uh, all the attachments that allow it to be fixed to our uh, list. RCU, this RCU. Is that all the uh, transfer? Roger, Al. Yeah. Well, that's the color camera you're going to use okay. out on the lunar surface, isn't it? Uh, no, uh, Jerry, I, we don't have the color camera that we're going to use on the lunar surface inside the limb. It's outside on the race side. It's going to be just like uh, Apollo 11. When Pete goes down the ladder, you'll pull a handle, it'll roll in the race side, and then the TV will be pointing right at uh, the lower part of the ladder so that everyone can see when he steps on the surface. We'll later uh, put that uh, out on the lunar surface on a tripod, and then we'll be able to move it around so that everybody can see for our, both of our EVAs. Those two cameras, I only showed you one. The other is... Uh, Right next to it are the two uh, 70 millimeter still cameras. They hook right on the front of the uh, suit so that you can take still pictures of uh, rocks, uh, the surveyor when we get there, uh, and uh, LSEP and what have you while we're walking around. Jerry, I'm showing you a picture of the instrument panel right now, but what I'm more interested in, on my monitor, I can see some dust particles. Maybe you can see them down there on the TV. I think that's pretty good resolution. That's they affirmative, Pete. to be floating in the sunlight. Incidentally, we've been bouncing and between 40 and 41,000 feet uh, so far. In here, of course, uh, there is a little bit of... Speed's dust, been mostly it's constant. Right now, I just opened the descent H2O. I'm opening the descent O2, Pete. 
and I'm going to have them repress auto, and when I do, you're going to hear a bang. So, uh, give me a buy for the bang. Dick? No. Bang for the bang. Ready? Oh. Okay. Yep. Ready for a bang. And the cabin repress circuit breaker is going to go close. Suit isolation valve, both put flow, and then actuate override. Uh, if you just wait a minute. Houston, uh, we can see the dust particles very well. I didn't hear any bang. Did the bang happen, okay. or is it coming up? There's a shot of the uh, disconnect valve. Can you show them what both of the pushes were still? We've got one over here beat on yeah. the side, one on the bottom. I didn't know yeah. one on the floor right in, in front of the hatch. Uh, 12, Houston, the next uh, we've seen the one on the, the floor. Disability. Wow, the wind is really horrible. It's okay. basically so up against us at 121 knots. So, sorry, it's going to be a longer than expected flight here. Hey, pull this back, right? I don't know, you have to back it up and show that beat. Yeah. It's pretty tight quarters up there. I don't know, you're going to have to back the camera up. Okay, why don't I do that? Take a look at the monitor. Uh, that's a good Let me just check my fuel. It seems to be okay. I fully loaded it. Should have lots of range. Identifiable craters. 
you look out and see if the crater's in the right place, if that, I mean, if the 42 degree mark's in the right place, if it is, then we'll just continue on the present trajectory. If not, he could use his control stick and put a certain number of inputs in to change the, the direction we're headed. For example, if he saw it at 40 degrees instead of 42, saw the crater we wanted, he could pitch down a couple or pitch up a couple depending on what he wanted to do. If he saw it at 40, he'd pitch down a, a couple of blips, a couple of hits of the stick. And hopefully very shortly the computer would notice this and start heading for the 40 degree point. I'd continue reading the numbers, he'd continue to monitor all the way down. This is obviously an oversimplification, but necessarily so. Okay. Mach point nine, still forty thousand feet. Okay, uh, we're readjusting back inside now. Indicator speed is okay. We seem to be a bit on the nose heavy side now. Back over here, Al. Okay, let me run up one of these window shades so I can check this AOT. Cut down your light, I can just leave it open a little bit. The other day this AOT was beautiful. I think we're uh, halfway through the flight. Uh, Pete, you gonna let Dick get any lamp time? We're about in line okay, with. Uh, We're about in line with the Faroe Islands now, I was about to say. They're off to the left, underneath the clouds. No, I guess not, 12. 
Very good okay. travel log, Dan. Yeah. Start to button her up and up. And... All right, Dick. Hey, Pete, we can uh, you want to button that up and then bring that camera in here and uh, I'll just set the camera over to you right here. Take a look at the Earth and the Moon. Okay, here. Here comes the camera, followed by me. Toot, toot. Watch it, it's an F, uh, it's wide open, so stop her down. There you go. 12, Houston. Okay, I'm going to close the cabin, re cabin repress now. Stand by for a bang, Dick. Okay. That's it. Okay, that, that was a bang that I heard. Well, Houston, Good. we heard the bang that time. Yeah. Oh, so last time they didn't hear the bang either. Okay, yeah, okay. It wasn't yeah, just like me. About, uh, it wasn't just me. 32 got off in your ear. Uh, Roger and Pete, uh, on your way through there, would you give us another tunnel index reading? Okay. Minus three tenths the other day, Pete. Oh, would that change? Fortunately, it hasn't. It's still minus three tenths. Hey, Jerry? Go ahead. Hey, Jerry? Go ahead, Dick. Can see that number one window on the television? That's the number one window on the television? That's what it looks like. Say, uh, what Dick? Is, what is it up the window? I need your damn rag. We gotta clean this CSF tunnel hatch seal. It's got a bunch of junk stuck on it. Thank you. It's like all these circuit breakers are just exactly like we thought them to make this. Okay. Light lights on when it shakes up. Kevin dump valve opens. It's still open. Okay. Cabin dump valve is still open. Okay. We got IVT and press home. Uh, 12 Houston, that's a real good picture of the number one window there. What do you got in the picture? Be careful, Charlie. There's a big white thing out there that looks like a piece of pie. Seems to be the Apollo 12 crew uh, aimed to be a little bit entertaining every now and again. Their wives seem to apparently expect them to be that way, uh, which would make sense. And uh, I, uh, on the lunar surface, Al Bean had planned to—he uh, had brought a timer device 
for a camera. And they had planned to cause puzzlement by setting the timer on the camera and then having both the astronauts on the lunar surface and surveyor in the same okay, picture. Which would have driven the conspiracy theories, the theories, theorists nuts, of course. Uh, but unfortunately, they didn't uh, get that working. Well, I think he misplaced the timer device. That was actually covered in one of the documentaries, I think, uh, from Earth to Moon or something like that. But yeah, they were aware how important taking photographs and doing the TV and all that business was. Perhaps more so than the Apollo 11 crew. <laughs> of course. Okay, what roads in and somebody's pencil is floating by. There you go. The tour's out. Check and see. Go go over it. Can stop now? Yeah. All over the camera and you can get the... Uh, go ahead. Uh, We're going to change station, Jerry. Roger. I'll put this at the back of the seat with the gloves. Wait a minute. Let me get up out of your way. Okay. Uh, 12 Houston on that uh, moon shot it looked like uh, we could see part of the uh, the lunar surface that's uh, in the Terminator and behind the Terminator Good luck 
We're having trouble doing that ourselves. Again, the sun is behind the moon, I believe, at this point, so they'll get better views on the way out than on the way in. I didn't realize that wastewater dump was so propulsive. That really upset us there a while back. Sure did. Yeah. like the perfect dust collector or something. It was really dirty. Fido says he really appreciated okay, that dust. Traps are put there. Say again? Fido said he really appreciated that dump. Check our fuel. Uh, still good. More than half. We're definitely more than halfway through the flight. And uh, everything seems to be relatively stable. Still within the same altitude range. Turning a little bit here. Bunch of clouds outside this hatch. Well, it's not really a hatch. Portal. Not much of view out front. It's going to be a little bit hard to land, maybe. Dealing with the hatch would make me a little bit nervous. After all, if something goes wrong with that, you may be in trouble. <laughs> That seems to have been fairly reliable. Okay, we've extended the handle to the full extension. And we're going to ratchet the control back up in place. Pack it off, but we can't see that. Uh, otherwise. Okay. Yeah, the engines and all don't make me nearly as nervous as the bits that could leave you exposed to space <laughs> when you remove the limb, of course. A better sun angle would have been good for this. Right now it's just overhead. I mean, it's nice and all, but could be even more cinematic. I do have a reshade and it's got a lot of settings, but I don't want to play around with the settings. It could occasionally freeze the game. It's looking okay now, anyway. Oh. And we're going to 
leave the umbilical stone or raise it in the hatch. The hatch right here. Okay. Fortunately, after this flight, we're going to have a lot of more scenic flights and not a lot of long flights over water. Not at all until we get to uh, crossing the Bering Strait. So it's it's all got to be pretty scenic from here after You're this flight. Some of them will be short flight, well, short in distance, not in time flights across Europe. I would, I'm gonna zigzag across Europe to sightsee and of course make the required distance for circumnavigation. So some of the flights will be more north-south than east-west. But that all starts once we cross the Atlantic. I should do a helicopter tour of Iceland at some point, though. Or a Harrier tour. Friends in Australia are wondering. We've got a, uh, of course, the top hatch on the limb, which is the first thing you saw. Feet wiped off the seal and closed it. And then, uh, he put on a, uh, stroke on the limb. Although we had it stowed in here a moment ago, it, it uh, fits on the limb. And he put that in, and of course, it looks like a big inverted ice cream. When that was complete, and those two attached to the limb. When that was complete, then uh, Dick got out the probe, which is attached to the command module, put it in the uh, drogue, laid it with a drogue, and then attached it to the command module structure. And now he's put in the command module hatch. When we undock around the moon in two days, after passing through the same passageway, Dick will be in here by himself, we'll put the same hardware in, and then when we undock, he'll end up with this hatch to keep the seal of the command module at the probe on the, command, you know, on the front end of the command module. We'll end up with the drogue on the limb, and then the limb hatch to keep the uh, pressure seal at the limb. And this is the way we'll be for the 35 hours or so that we're apart. When we get back together, then he'll come and dock his probe with our drogue, and just the same as we are right now, we'll remove all, both hatches and the probe and the drogue, and we'll, we'll come back out of the limb into the command module. So it's a lot of hardware, and it's heavy, because the total weak vehicle weight right now is about 100,000 pounds, and it has to be removable. That's it, you can turn our tunnel lights out, and that's it, it's completely yeah. done. The little valve right in the center is the pressure equalization valve. There's a difference in pressure between the limb and the command module. We can take that valve and open it, and it'll allow the pressure to equalize, thereby uh, allowing us to open the hatch. And that's this. It's got a handle with some teeth on it. Dick really ratchets it around. It works pretty good. Jerry, I think some comments for the folks at home. Uh, we've enjoyed doing this for them. All three of us are in good spirits. We're feeling great. We've exercised. We've slept well. The food's been good. We have lots of nice cold water to drink, and we're sure enjoying the scenery. Nowadays, uh, they'd be what, relaying up Twitter questions. The good people back home. Oh, there's uh, land think, there. Uh, it was a great show, and uh, we really enjoyed your our little tour. Down or the or something. Glad to see you guys are looking so good, and you're sounding great, and uh, we'll be seeing you later. I don't think there ought to be land there. Bye-bye. Very good. Bye-bye. What there is there is a uh, West Shetland Shelf Marine Protected Area. Uh, this is irregular, whatever is going on down there right now. I'll have to check out the scenery at, in this area. I think there might be a scenery error down there. Okay, I'll make a note of that. Well, sometimes you don't really know until you fly over the place. Take a peek at what's going on here.
on a previous flight, I found some issues uh, off of Helsinki and various other Clear. places that I've tried to fix as well. Now to advise the crew to go back to it is strange though. Mode. That looks like now the that default the, uh, limb housekeeping has grass. Completed. Hatch is reinstalled, the probe and drogue assembly. Total time on that, uh, let's listen. It's uh, set up well for start PTC. Okay, yeah, uh, we don't have to uh, do anything but uh, crank her off, okay? Affirmative. Uh, it seems like a definite square of bad stuff going on here. Should still be water. Total time on the just completed TV pass was some 56 minutes even. TV came on at 62 hours 52 minutes ground elapsed time and the intravehicular transfer began at 63 hours 4 minutes. We'll continue to monitor the air ground live for a few more minutes. We are approaching Scotland. Hopefully everything will be good by the time we get to the coast. Not any messed up coastline. Still holding around 41,000 uh, feet. On the antenna, Bravo. Fuel is okay. Bravo. And speed is okay. Flight after this will be a Spitfire, by the way. Uh, Glasgow to Dublin is the plan. So, continuing with the British planes. There are a lot of British planes, though, so we're not going to be able to get through a whole this lot of them. Apollo Control, 64 hours, 38 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 12, now 178,717 nautical miles out from Earth. Velocity 2,356 feet per second. We have approximately two and a half minutes of accumulated tape of some minor conversations that have taken place in the last uh, half hour or so, including a uh, description by Conrad of uh, some uh, nope, locations nope. and stop. landmarks and Australia, which he was able to see through the uh, optics from the spacecraft. We listen to that tape now. Houston, Apollo 12. Call Houston, go. It looks like this messed up block is ending up ahead, Hello, which is good. 12. So Apollo 12, Houston, go. Really in the middle of the North Atlantic here. Right here. Are you going to let us know before we go to bed tonight whether we're going to do MCC4 or not? That's the course correction number four. I think we probably can see it right now. It uh, doesn't look too much like we're going to do one. 
That's probably because they have to wake up to do that. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't, I don't know uh, if that's Pete, the plan. Okay, very good. Uh, Pete, what Some of these seem to be early morning course Hello, corrections. He's visited well, Australia, see. apparently. Okay, there's this the end the of the bad control, block. And that completes the playback of uh, accumulated tape. At 64 hours, 40 minutes, ground elapsed time. This is Apollo Control. I'm very close now. It should be on our map, yeah. You can see the edge of Scotland on the map now. This is Apollo Control, 66 Wind hours, still steadfastly minutes, against us. Time. Had very little communications with the spacecraft Apollo 12 during the last hour. About 17 seconds of accumulated tape and one brief exchange with the crew. And they were advised to uh, shut down charging battery B. Damn it, play us to 17 seconds. <laughs> play back that. All of that 17 seconds <laughs> right now. Apollo 12, Houston. No exceptions. Roger. Battery B is all chucked full of electrons now, and you can terminate the charge. Roger. Thank you. And that, uh... There's uh, some total of words exchanged with <laughs> mission control during the last hour. According to the flight plan, the crew should be at this time in their heat period and uh, going into their pre-sleep checklist. And at 68 hours, ground elapsed time, uh, about an hour and a half from now, hour and 20 minutes, they're scheduled to begin a eight hour rest period. Flight Dynamics Officer Dave Reed advised the uh, Flight Director Cliff Charlesworth in the last few minutes that uh, right now it still looks as though mid-course number four will be unnecessary. But uh, as they get additional tracking following the uh, wastewater dump, which apparently perturbed the tra trajectory somewhat. Uh, for another several hours, and they'll have a better handle on whether or not there will be a, a need for the mid-course number four maneuver. Digitals with the uh, distance and velocity information is not being generated at this time. And at 66 hours 40 minutes ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. Interesting thing about my moving map that uh, pairs up with X Plane is that it has all the names in the local language. And so. I forget what island that is. This is Apollo Control. It's but I can't pronounce the name because <laughs> it's in Scottish. Ground elapsed time: 182,011 nautical miles out from ta from uh, Earth. Uh, 2,264 feet per second in velocity. We have uh, some 41 seconds of tape to play back at this time. Follow 
Dodger 12 uh, at this time. It looks like uh, there'll be no need to schedule a mid-course for next eight hours or so if uh, we have no major changes in the trajectory due to dumps or anything like that. It probably will be uh, a sure no mid-course mid -course for. Roger, Pete, uh, it looks like your EKG uh, indication has gone sour down here. Would you uh, check your blue lead on uh, your, your system there when you get a chance? That looks like the Isle of Lewis and Harris. Yeah, Isle of Lewis and Harris. Uh, part of the Outer Hebrides. And so to our right In is Scotland proper. Okay. And we are over the Minch. So we're right there. Okay, I just didn't reinstall it correctly. You are now medically acceptable again. <laughs> I had to wear those things the whole time. I think he has, I think Pete Conrad had problems with the little medical contacts on his skin, some irritation, we'll probably hear about that. This is Apollo Control. That last exchange uh, regarding the commander's biomedical harness and reconnecting it so that flight surgeon John Ziegelschmidt could uh, observe the commander's heart rate was uh, a live transmission. Yay. <laughs> to leave the circuit up for a few moments longer in case conversation resumes. This is Apollo Control. The line is getting quite noisy now as the spacecraft uh, rotating three revolutions per hour uh, loses lock with the ground from the high gain antenna. At 67 hours, 12 minutes, ground elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. Okay, not many uh, towns up in northern Scotland here. Not a whole lot to mention. I mean, everything has a name. Uh, this is Apollo Control, 67 hours, 42 minutes, ground elapsed time. The uh, spacecraft communicator, Jerry Carr, is talking to the spacecraft now. Uh, let's uh, play back the tape and eventually catch up live. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead, Houston. Roger, are you about ready to give us an EMOD dump? Okay, coming at you. I've got your uh, RCS consumables if you're ready to copy. Okay, Jerry, go ahead. Roger, at the GET 67 plus zero zero. RCS total is 80.0. .0. Houston, what were you calling? I 
we must have missed a bit because they were probably gonna have to repeat that right Again, I've cut out all the pauses that were more than a minute long, so sometimes these clips are pretty far apart. I should probably introduce these videos a little bit more properly at the beginning of each one to tell you what I, what the heck I'm doing. Again, yeah, the, uh, the audio is cut uh, so that 12, there aren't too many pauses. Uh, interesting sort of landscape. Very deserty, actually. Not what you would necessarily expect. Follow 12 Houston, how do you read? Over. Okay, Dick, uh, we lost your EMOD dump about halfway through. Would you uh, try it again? EMOD dump is the software dump, they're just checking to see that everything is alright. Like the memory dump files from Windows or something like that. Not quite, but... Apollo 12, Houston, how do you read? Apollo 12, Apollo 12, this is Houston, how do you read? Dick, and we'll need another EMOD dump from you, too. Uh, two. To our right, I think, is the island called Roger, Sky, S-K-Y-E. Pyro Alpha 37.1, Pyro Bravo 37.1. That's to right off Delta in the distance. The Highlands of Scotland. Well, they're pretty high on the left side over here. Roger, we're going to need a cryo stir. Okay, and uh, no medication, right? Apollo 12, Houston. We seem to be having some communication issues. Go ahead, Houston. Uh, Roger, uh, would you verify that you changed uh, canister number six out? We sure did. Okay, and uh, ask Dick to give us a, a quick call. Uh, his last downlink uh, was pretty rough, and we suspect maybe it was mic position. Otherwise, we might have comm problems. Okay, you're sounding pretty good. It must have been his mic, and uh, we've copied your EMOD dump, and so that about wraps it up. Okay, uh, we're uh, getting ready to uh, sack out here, and uh, we've still got to chlorinate the water yet. We're still cleaning up some dinner a little bit. Uh, if you want us to wear biomed tonight, we prefer not to the two that are sleeping under uh, the couches uh, so that it doesn't interfere with our sleeping bags. Uh, Pete, doctor says uh, we could get along without it tonight, but they definitely want it uh, tomorrow night. Okay, uh, I think 
to make that standard procedure, they had to rig these sleeping bags so that you could get in there without uh, having to leave it half open. Roger, Pete. Uh, the the uh, biomed they need tomorrow night is just on you and Al. Yeah, we're the two that are sleeping in the sleeping bags under the couch. Ain't that nice. See you in the morning, Pete. This is Apollo Control. With that final tuck-in message by spacecraft communicator Jerry Carr, apparently uh, communications have ceased for the next 10 hours. All right, so that's the end of that day. Spacecraft is now 183,032. So we're over sky, and it's also to our right. Velocity got 236 feet per second. Coming up uh, at 68 hours and 30 minutes. Some uh, 34 minutes from now will be the uh, crossover from Earth's sphere of influence to the moon's sphere of influence. And at uh, 67 hours, 56 minutes, around elapsed time, this is Apollo Control. The photo scenery of Scotland look is, is looking pretty good though right now, so that's good. Looking very scenic, uh, though, you know, again, I'm interested, uh, it's interesting that it looks this so dry. Apollo Control, 69 hours, 19 minutes, ground elapsed time. Apollo 12, presently, uh, 32,099 nautical miles from the moon. Traveling at a velocity relative to the moon of 3,542 feet per second. After the changeover in reference from uh, Earth to moon, Numbers, the display here in Mission Control now uh, show moon distances and moon relative velocities. We have a little over a minute of accumulated tape uh, where spacecraft communicator Jerry Carr discussed with uh, Dick Gordon some uh, minor adjustments to the passive thermal control mode. Also uh, setting up the communication system or the sleep, and finally, uh, what is probably the uh, final conversation for the next 10 hours or so. We thought they were already done. Uh, roll that tape now. Apollo 12, Houston. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Roger, are you about through with your dump up there? We're showing uh, O2 flow a little bit high. Looks like your urine uh, nozzle is open and you're dumping. What we're ending up with here is uh, oh, okay. TTC is going unstable here. It's beginning to diverge, and we figured we might as well stop it and start it over and, and get things squared away so there'll be no danger whatsoever of waking you guys up later. Darn it, you guys. Get those PTCs okay, right. Well, stop with the right urine now. dumps. <laughs> Always dumping urine. No oh Hey, Dick, uh, what do you say we reestablish PTC here and get going good so there will be no danger of waking you later? Okay. I get the feeling he is already quite ready to sleep, but oh well. So right in front of us is Fort William, and uh, we're sort of uh, about to cross that line of lakes that goes from Inverness right across Scotland down looking good uh, down to which okay, Firth is this well Houston uh, you're clear to go ahead and turn it up and uh, set your S band normal mode switch to off down to the Firth of Lorne <laughs> it's uh, the Great Glen that stretches to the Left, but we see a patch of bad scenery there, so I'll make a note of that. This is Apollo that. Control. That wraps up.
wraps up uh, communications uh, that took place after the rest period was scheduled to begin. Rest period extended to 10 hours since the mid-course correction number four maneuver is extremely likely not to take place. Meanwhile, the Space Flight Meteorology Group of the Weather Bureau said this morning that weather conditions in the planned landing areas are expected to be satisfactory for the next four days. Ocean areas of concern should have partly cloudy to cloudy skies, winds 10 to 12 knots, seas 3 to 4 feet, temperatures in the Atlantic area in the upper 70s, temperatures in the Pacific area in the mid 80s, isolated showers in the Atlantic and widely scattered showers in the Pacific. And at 69 hours, 23 minutes, ground elapsed time. This is Apollo Control. There's this patch of scenery that was obviously taken at a different time, and that's uh, Fort William. So I guess they had wanted a different shot of it, more updated shot. I got caught up. You can see probably another city over there that got the same treatment. I think that's Tobermory, maybe? Oh, we're going too far to the left. This is Apollo Control. 70 hours, 8 minutes, ground elapsed time. We should probably be making the approach to Glasgow. It's been a long flight. Distance now of Apollo 12 from the moon, 30,385 nautical miles. Velocity toward the moon, 3,558 feet per second. To summarize the last eight hours of Apollo 12 mission, which uh, the green team of flight controllers under flight director Cliff Charlesworth. Well, there's Glasgow We're here in the control BOR, center. so yeah, let's the start crew descending. Apollo 12 went into the limb for the limb familiarization and housekeeping chores somewhat early. Also, the television pass, which uh, had been scheduled to start at 63 hours 30 minutes, actually began at 62 hours 52 minutes, about uh, 38 minutes early. The TV ran uh, 56 minutes total time. During the TV pass, the uh, crew of Apollo 12 uh, took the viewer a tour of the lunar module, how they stowed the equipment in various stowage areas description of some of the uh, pilot devices such as the landing point designator and uh, they closed out with a view of the earth and the moon out the command module windows after the hatches probe and drogue had been restowed in the tunnel they Continued on with the uh, their eat period and the uh, pre-sleep checklist uh, and a negative crew status report. They've taken no medications. They we're back on the uh, timeline for the beginning of the rest period at 68 hours. And since uh, mid-course correction number four likely will not be made, the sleep period will be extended to, for a total of 10 hours to end some 7 hours 48 minutes from now. Apollo 12 entered the moon sphere of influence or equal gravisphere at 68 hours 30 minutes 22 seconds. The handover is taking place now. The uh, day shift headed up by flight director Jerry Griffin and here in mission control the uh, new team of flight controllers who likely were asleep at the time of the TV pass are watching a replay on the large Ida 4 television projection screen and on individual monitors at 70 hours 11 minutes ground elapsed time this is Apollo control uh, the lake directly in front of us, well, okay, not quite, um, well, we'll go a little bit further before I point it out. 
I don't want to capture my cursor right now, but a little bit to the right there, the one that's stretching out in front of us is Loch Lamond, famous from a song. Or Loch Lomond. I don't know exactly how to pronounce that. Loch Lomond, I think, is how the song pronounces it. This is Apollo Control it. at 71 hours, 18 minutes. Apollo 12 is 27,953 nautical miles from the moon, traveling at a velocity of 3,582 feet per second. That is lunar referenced. Total weight of the vehicle, 96,117 pounds. Six hours, 41 minutes remaining in this sleep period. Systems performance on Apollo 12 continues normal. This is Mission Control Houston at 71 hours, 18 minutes. Okay, so yes, the lake that we're about to be over is Loch Lomond. Or Loch Lomond. And Glasgow is just up ahead. I've idled the engine, so we just sort of need to descend. This is Apollo Control at 71 hours, 48 minutes. This time we will replay the tape of the television transmission of early this morning. We'll play the video and audio back to the news center in Building 1 at the Manned Spacecraft Center. We will utilize the release line for the audio portion of this tape. We'll play the tape now. Roll tape. I don't know if we right. really want to go I'll through this replay of the tape, but I'm about to land anyway. You got any late night watchers, Jerry? So again, this was recorded earlier. We had listened to this audio already. They're just replaying it for people. Uh, now, can you pull up your seat, please? Okay, just a second. I'll have to move the camera. To our left is Glasgow. I'll hold the camera here and hit it. Okay. How's that, Dick? I got it just fine. Okay, Dick's putting the probe now under uh, the right hand seat. He's going to have to strap that in with something. It'll just, just enough to hold it there. See if I can scoot around and give you a shot of it. You would think they could have placed the instrument panel so that it wouldn't block half the window, but I guess the view is alright, maybe. Not as bad as the Concorde 
before I move my viewpoint up. Got some bad sort of island patches in the middle of the river there, but otherwise everything's looking crisp. I want you to juggle with this thing here. Oh, you got it out in the middle. Very crisp. Uh, no clouds, surprisingly, today over Glasgow. Boy. And again, real world weather, so. Must be a bright day. Sounds like you're handling uh, empty milk cans up there. Hey, you want to look at the drogue after a docking? That's right. Let's turn it around, but don't let any light hit on it, Dick, or I can't see it. How's that? Too much light. It's only one runway. Got a little sliver of light on it. How's that? Well, that saves us the trouble of trying to decide which runway to use. There it is. There's a drove after one docking. Uh, Roger, we can't see too much uh, because of the big light spot on it. I believe this does have air brakes. Yeah. This would be a good time for them. It's got top and bottom Ooh, air yeah. brakes. The only work on it is uh, jump when the mark starts, Dick. You hit it almost dead center when you uh, make right the docking. There. Yeah, right there. Those are That's very the convincing air brakes. Got the same length, too. Okay, Al, you want to... Sticker up here, we'll okay, just hang it. Let me open the uh, unit up there. Okay, go ahead, Pete. Okay, 12, the lighting in the tunnel looks uh, pretty okay. good now. Okay, and if you'll hold it just a minute, I'll get the uh, winter shades down in the lamp here. Here it goes. Surely the okay. brightest side of uh, Glasgow right now. Showing us its best. The city center is down the river there. Obviously, the airport is not right at the center of it or even close. Uh, down the river further is Dumbarton. Uh, we're almost passing over it here, but I'm going to continue to turn. So okay, that town right up there. Hand me the uh, hose first. Let me get some air going. Okay. Here, I'll get up there. This might be the book, Dick. Okay, right about there we'll be fine. Okay. And you want to handle along the hoses up. the lamp since there's no ventilation in there now we just lay them around down there where we're going to be uh, working with the lamp and it uh, makes it real nice for uh, cooling and uh, gives you some clean air down in there without them it gets a little stale after a while okay, okay. So getting ready for landing. God, I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to see through all this, but okay. It's pretty easy. Float on up. Gear down. Oh, that's a lot of drag with the landing gear. Good times. There you go. Now let me check his line. 
fine. It may not be as long as we'd like. Looks right. I don't know if this does flaps. Because it's a delta wing. I don't think so. I'll probably have to turn it around upside down. Let me dive in there. So, okay, no flaps. Let me scout those items and I'll hand them in to you, Pete. All right, what are you looking for? I need a book and I'll do them. Toss them in to you and you can put them up. Uh, 12 Houston, we had a pretty good view of your uh, ECF modular, and now we're getting a good view of the main panels upside down. We discovered an interesting thing while we were in here the other day. Uh, the AOT looks right into the command module front of the window. And I was looking out to see what I could see, and I saw this face looking back at me, and it was Dick in the other window. Roger, did it scare you? Should have hot here. <laughs> it's quite warm in here today. Uh, <laughs> the uh, way we is not the most convenient window configuration. Roger, looks like the sun's coming in through the CD. Where are you, airport? Okay, okay, there it is. Wow, we're high. Yeah, that's right. There's a box of Kleenex T. Come in here. Right by you. Next one's two towels. I'll go get them. We just uh, had a good okay. view of the plus fastened uh, down there on the floor between your legs. Yeah, I can't get down any further. My comp line won't allow me to go any further than I am right now, so I got myself Velcro to the top of Al's cliff. Up, still too far to the left. Shoot. Okay, that's a good view of it right there. Uh, better, better, better. I'm just giving you a two-hit tour, Jerry. Wow, it's it's wobbly though. Swaying we back and in forth. The other day we rigged the. Uh, Come on. The. Uh, All right, stop, 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 stop. It's got a huge wing. I don't exactly know what the stall speed is, to be honest. Uh. At least the trees aren't on the runway, on the runway. Here comes. But you got out? Yeah, here comes a couple of towels. Wow, okay. He's the both of that, and the Kleenex go on the left hand side. Okay, we're slowing down well. Let me get the 16 millimeter magazine. That's and the 100 knots. Magazine. It's a little bit shaky. I hope yeah, I didn't blow a tire. It didn't say so. Okay, here That's a good idea, and maybe I can say a few words about this. Well, as a matter of fact, you're going to have to do that, Al, because I can't get any lower on this comp cable. You know I want to get down there. All right. I'll, uh, I'll hold the camera. Deck. They apparently line the yeah, runways with shrubs here, here maybe. Okay, I'll just come on past. Okay. Okay. Dick. Okay. Uh, eh, they look all intact. It wasn't that fast. Guess we turn right here. So we have finally arrived at uh, uh, Glasgow your, Airport. Uh, helmet storage bag down there a couple seconds ago. And I'm gonna pause that. Probably we'll pick up after that replay. Oops, sorry, I'm clicking outside the window. Uh, I don't know if I can make this turn. Um, <laughs> I I don't think this airport was made for me. I'm just gonna go off. Thank you. Somebody who lives around here confirm whether they really populate the entire place with all these trees. But anyway, we have made the flight. Next time, Spitfire to Dublin. And with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.